and you're going to sound so smart. Like people are gonna be like, whoa. whoa. How do you know all this stuff? What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Giselle and I'm here to talk to you about ultrasound today. A lot of you guys have been asking me for this video which is how to study for your ultrasound specialty board exams. One of them being SPI which is very important for any of you guys to eventually become a registered diagnostic medical sonographer. So in this video I'm going to talk to you guys about five steps on what you need to do in order to help you study and pass your board exams. If you're new here, my name is Giselle. Welcome to the family. I would appreciate you if you like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos because I aim to spread positivity, to help others that want to be ultrasound technologists, and to just bring you guys along life with me. So with all of that being said, stick around for this whole video because these are going to really help you. If you're studying for other stuff too, this will definitely help you towards that as well. Let's get started. There are five steps that I think you guys need to do in order for you to be able to get the best studying in for your board exams. Now the first one is going to be read. Yes, read your books. Whichever book you have, read it all the way through first. Just kind of get the gist of it. Even if you don't like reading and you don't know what you're reading about, just read it. Try to get through it. This is like in the beginning stage of you know you need to study for these exams. So go ahead and read that book. I personally suggest Edelman's books. These books are books you can only get if you go to the Edelman seminars. But there are also a ton of other books that will help you study for these specialty exams. So whichever book you have, go ahead and read that whole entire your book first. Try to get through it, see what you're about to learn and study for your board exam. This process may take you a couple of days if you are busy and you're working or if you have a family. Try to read throughout the whole entire book on your free time and that'll definitely help you get started for when you really want to buckle down and study the book itself. This is going to help you get situated with the subjects, with the content, and so you know what you're getting yourself into. Now once you read the entire book and you're ready to actually sit down and study and study hard, I would say read every single chapter one by one. Now the most sufficient way you can do this is by on your first day of studying, read chapter one. On your next day of studying, read chapter two, but then go back and read chapter one so you're refreshing your mind. Then on your third day, you're gonna go ahead and read chapter three. Then go back to chapter one and chapter two and just read those just to refresh your mind again. If you keep doing this constantly, you will have all the materials in your head and you'll see the keywords and remember them and see things that you probably didn't focus on before. If you don't want to go in order like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, what I suggest is finding a topic that you are very much so interested in. For example, if you are studying for abdomen and you enjoy kidneys more than reading the liver chapter, I'd say start with the kidneys chapter, then go back, read the liver chapter, but then also read the kidney, then the liver chapter. And then after you finish liver, say you're going to do spleen. So then you're gonna do kidneys, liver, spleen, kind of like that, so that you always have the information in your head and you are ready to go in depth with each of those chapters. Reading is very important because this is where you're gonna learn all of the material. I suggest this Understanding Ultrasound Physics book. It is very helpful and just go through all the chapters as much as you can. Try to understand the concepts that is gonna help you study for these exams. Highly, highly recommend. So step number two is going to be writing. Writing your notes. So you can do writing your notes while you are reading your chapters. You can do them after you're done reading your chapters. Some people are different when it comes to study habits. So if you're the type of person who can write while you're reading the chapter, go ahead and do that. I would say that you should read first and then read it again while you're writing your notes because then you can go back, write things that you noticed are really important, things that are bolded out or underlined or you need to look back at for more information. A lot of times I write down definitions so that I can say them out loud and say them over and over again so that they stick to my head. Write down things that you know for sure that you can't remember right away. I would use different colored pens, different colored highlighters to organize things and make things pop out. So let me just show you an example. 
Right now I'm studying for pediatrics. If you can see here, I have some things in green, underlining some stuff in pink, squaring stuff, putting stars. I put a straight line down here and put the content of what I'm writing. So I'm gonna put like parotid gland and then things that I need to know about the parotid gland. So I read my chapters first and then I read the chapter again and then take notes. Things that I know I need to know later. The act of you guys writing out what you're reading and what you're learning is going to help you remember things in the future and for you to be able to understand these concepts. Sometimes people have to write things over and over and over again. If you have to do that, do that to help you. The third step is to draw. So what I mean by draw is draw different diagrams, draw different charts, and kind of like write acronyms. So these acronyms will help you with studying and remembering things in the future. You can write down the acronym and acronyms help you remember things a lot quicker. If you are doing SPI, what I suggest is drawing a lot of the charts. So see this here? Draw things that will help you understand this concept more. Another drawing that's really helpful is this axial and lateral resolution chart. If you see this chart on page 153, these charts, these charts are really important for you to know and understand physics. So definitely, definitely, if you can draw something, draw it. Now, one tip for you is that on the SPI exam or any board exams, they do give you a piece of paper. And on this piece of paper, you can write down any notes, any drawings that you have that are already in your mind right when you sit down and take that test. I suggest writing down all the charts that you need to remember or all the acronyms and drawings that you need to make sure you don't forget later on when you're like freaking out about your test. I remember the first thing I did was write down everything that I needed to remember for sure on that piece of paper so that it was in my mind and if I came up on a question that had to do with any of that stuff, I could just look down at that little scratch piece of paper and know that I already had my notes on it. If you're doing vascular, I suggest writing all of the things that have to do with the way that waveforms are supposed to show on certain carotid exams or venous exams. and. Definitely, definitely make a chart, memorize that chart, and go ahead and write that on your scratch piece of paper. The fourth thing I think you should do is to answer questions. Now, most of these books that you get from Edelman seminars are going to have questions at the end of each chapter. They're also going to have questions at the end of the book. Do these questions once you're done reading all of the material, writing all of your notes, and drawing all of your charts and pictures. Doing all of those things will help you eventually be able to answer these questions. Now, when you answer questions, make sure you are reading the questions slowly and make sure that you are looking for keywords. Keywords that will help you find the answer because when you're taking these board exams, there are going to be four to six choices for you to pick from. A lot of them are gonna be similar, similar wordings, but you know one of those answers is correct. It could be such a big difference to you for you to read the question slowly, find the keywords of the question, and then look at your options of what you need to pick. The answer could be in centimeters per second, but they could change it up and put like meters per second. They could change up things by one decimal or one zero. So make sure you're paying attention to the question and to the options that they give you on that question. This Understanding Ultrasound Physics book has questions at the end of each chapter. So definitely go through these, test your knowledge, see what you need to work on, and see what you need to go back and understand better. There is also another book that I suggest. It's Davies Book of Questions. These Davies books literally have over 500 different questions that'll help you with testing your knowledge. So I suggest doing those. There are online sources like Ultrasound Registry Review, which you do have to pay for, but they offer tons and tons of questions for you to test your knowledge. And also Edelman X Zone. Now this one is super important because Edelman is a huge name in the ultrasound industry. So definitely check out the X Zone. You do also have to pay for this, but if you attend the seminars, they will give you a code so you can have that free after the seminar is over. Don't forget to make flashcards 
cards if that's a good way for you to memorize things and also focus on understanding the concepts more than just memorizing. The fifth step that you need to do to help you study for your board exams would be to explain what you're learning. Explain these things to other people. I suggest having a study group so that you can all study together but sometimes that's hard to do and also if you're somebody who likes to study alone then maybe you can explain these things to your friends or to your families after you study your stuff. First off, you'll sound smart. After reading all this stuff, you're going to learn so much, things that you never knew before, and you're going to sound so smart. Like people are gonna be like, whoa. How do you know all this stuff? And honestly, you should feel proud of yourself and you should feel smart because a lot of this stuff is truly things that people have no idea about. And you're going to be dealing with this stuff on the daily. You are going to see pathology on the daily. So it's really important that you understand the concepts that you are learning about. When you are scanning in the field, you are constantly thinking in your head. And all of this knowledge, studying all this stuff for your board exam is going to help you on the field make the best decisions for your patients for yourself it's also going to help the doctors in the long run and knowing that you can help these patients because you're so knowledgeable in these subjects it's going to be so rewarding at the end of the day a lot of us like our specialties if we do abdomen usually we love abdomen if we have vascular usually we love vascular for me I love vascular so vascular and physics kind of go hand in hand and studying the vascular book studying the SPI book those went hand in hand together and I was able to explain those things to other people and by me explaining the concept of how the blood flow works in the body shows that I know what I'm talking about. So when I'm scanning those carotids, when I'm scanning the venous system or the arterial system, I have the knowledge because I studied for these board exams to know what I'm trying to find and trying to look at. Now there's going to be a lot of things that you've never seen before or things that are confusing and that's okay, that happens all the time. Time. Ultrasound is a learning experience, a constant learning experience, and there are techs who didn't see something in 40 years. There are techs who have never seen things. I, for one, have seen a ton of pneumothorax, pneumothoraces, and some techs have never seen a pneumo. So everyone is different, everyone experiences different things, but we all have to study, take these board exams, especially take the SPI board exam and take a specialty board exam to work at different places. So let's go over the five steps again. Number one, read your material and your books. Number two, write your notes and write down everything that you need to remember and learn. Number three, draw your charts, your acronyms, your pictures, and label them correctly so that you know what you're looking at. Number four, answer questions, study questions, multiple choice questions, because that's what you're going to be tested on. And number five, explain everything that you learned to other people to your friends, colleagues, anyone, your dog, just so that you know what you're talking about. If you do these five steps, it'll help you tremendously. Make sure you know when your test is going to be because everyone is different and you need to know how long it's going to take for you to study. Some people can do all of this within two weeks to three weeks. Some people need a few months. Honestly, I'm that person who needs a few months and I need motivation to start studying. So if possible, if you know you're about to study for something, get started, push yourself, stay positive, don't give up. And if you don't pass these exams, you can always take them again. Just improve your way of how you need to study. And they also show you what areas on the test that you need to focus on more so that the next time you can pass your exam. I highly, highly recommend attending Edelman seminars. Now, a lot of people ask me, are these seminars worth it? Well, yeah, if you need help understanding concepts, if you need somebody to actually teach it to you and you can't just sit there and focus and read on your own, I highly recommend Edelman seminars. They are pricey. They can range from $250 to four hundred dollars it's it's really pricey but if you have the money and the time to go to them I highly suggest it because they give you so much information that you will be able to get by just reading the book by yourself they also give you access to the X zone which gives you tons and tons of questions that you will probably see on your board exam I took the Edelman seminar for abdomen and I'm gonna show you the abdomen book 
Here is the book for the Edelman seminar class. I took it for abdomen and as you can see, there's a ton of pictures, things that are underlined, bolded, organized in a way where each organ has its own chapter. There's questions at the end of this book. So here's the very end of the book. Multiple choice questions. Just go through a ton of questions and see what you need help with, what you need to know, what you need to focus on. Uh, but these books, like, highly, highly recommend. Here's the abdomen one. And right now, obviously, I'm studying for pediatrics. Here's the pediatrics one. The way that it works is there are different classes that they offer. I'm going to show you the website right here. If you go to esp inkcom you're gonna see that there are these options for upcoming seminars. For example, now because of you know what, they do live webinars and you can register for these. There are courses such as abdomen, echo, fetal echo, OBGYN, pediatrics, ultrasound physics, and vascular. There are also webinars for breast, if there are any exams that you are planning on taking, these seminars will definitely help you study and go through the material. Edelman, definitely, definitely take a look at Edelman. If you can afford it, check it out. If you can't afford it, try to find the book from somebody who has already done it. A lot of people resell these books, so maybe you can find them. Or if you know anyone in the field, maybe they'll be so kind enough to help you out and let you borrow theirs from when they went to the seminar. Another source that I see many people talking about is URR, which is the Ultrasound Registry Review website. Now I'm going to show you this website here. The Ultrasound Registry Review website includes packages that shows you study guides, high quality images and videos, lots of practice questions, mock registry exams. So these are really cool, really, really cool. You do have to pay for these as well, but honestly, it is going to prepare you for these exams. You really, really, really Really need to be prepared for these ultrasound board exams. All of this material that you're reading, you're studying, you're writing down, you're explaining to other people, all of these steps are going to help you pass those exams, but also doing the Edelman seminar or going on ultrasound registry review or practicing exome questions. All of these things are going to help supplement you and prove that you know what you're looking at and what you are talking about. At the end of the day, everybody studies differently. I personally do not like studying, but when it comes down to it, you have to sit down, put your mind to it, and start studying. You just have to start somewhere. Open that book, start reading, start looking up things on YouTube, ask people questions. I have so many ultrasound friends that I know who are currently in programs that come and ask me questions. So don't hesitate to ask any questions. Comment down below if you enjoyed this video, if you want more videos of ultrasound things. Let me know what you want to see. I have been answering all your questions and enjoying talking to you guys and becoming friends with you. Like I always say, be kind to one another, be positive, never give up on your goals. You're literally on your way to becoming an ultrasound tech. This is the end of the video. I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you in the next one. Bye!